Hello everyone, my name is Connor, and today we're going to be taking a look at what's on my Mac. Essentially what we're going to do is going to go through my applications folder, um, give a brief description of uh, some of the notable applications that I have, point out some of my favorite applications this year, 2015, on the Mac OS X, and just give a brief overview of how I have my Macintosh set up. Now that I'm within my applications folder, we're just going to go through the applications alphabetically. One password I use every single day, and I also have one password installed on my browser, which is Chrome. And I use one password to save all of my passwords, any sensitive information that I might want to keep track of on my computer. And I also use it to generate passwords, which it does an amazing job with. I downloaded this version from the Mac App Store, so it can be synced across multiple platforms with iCloud. Um, before that, I had the version that wasn't from the App Store, and sadly, that does not support syncing with iCloud. And syncing with 1Password if you don't use Dropbox is a real pain in the butt. Beyond that, I use the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite, and I have the entire suite. Um, the applications that I use mainly are the ones that I've downloaded here and that you see here. I'm not going to go through the applications because if you have any interest in these applications, most likely you already know which ones you use and which ones are for you and what they do. Alfred 2 is probably my favorite application on the Mac, and that is because it is just the most slick productivity-based application that I have used to date. And it is brilliant at opening tasks, um, it's brilliant at which workflows, I have the pro version and I absolutely love it. In addition to that, Astro I use for my Facebook messaging. It's not the greatest application, but at the same time I like to use Facebook to message contacts and not necessarily have to deal with Facebook profiles or news feeds in the background. Boom is an application that I use every day on my iMac which has my good speakers hooked up to it. However, I also use it on my laptop too to show people videos in loud settings. What Boom allows you to do is it allows you to have a system-wide equalizer and audio booster which allows you to really you know, maximize the sound potential with your speakers um, either on your Mac or external speakers that you have hooked up to your Mac. Cyberduck is my file transfer protocol client of choice, and I highly recommend uh, Cyberduck for any beginning web developers or people who just have uh, you know files to send to and fro servers. DM1 is a beat production application, and I use this uh, not really as to make any beats, but just as a hobby, and I really do enjoy it. Um, it was rather cheap, it's uh, made by Korg, and overall it's a pretty good application. Flux I use. Um, almost every day when it is actually running right now. What Flux does is it allows me, once I'm browsing my computer at night or possibly in my bed or somewhere where I may be ready to go to sleep, it can adjust the color sensitivity, brightness. Um, that is super helpful and I absolutely adore the application. It was a free download online and uh, it's really made uh, browsing my computer at night or reading on my computer a lot easier of a task. Uh, GitHub, I have the application uh, just in case I want to push or pull anything to repositories and don't feel like using Terminal. Google Chrome is my web browser of choice and I've always stood by the Google uh, browser mainly because I'm so in-depth with the Google ecosystem um, and they've done such a great job at syncing all of my information cross-platform. Kuva, I've done a review on previously uh, on my YouTube channel um, and that's where I have, uh, like for instance, this background is a Kuva background. I run this on all of my computers and mobile devices all the time to uh, give me the best backgrounds and it's never let me down. Memory Clean I also run all the time, have it running right now. What Memory Clean allows me to do is I have it so that uh, anytime I quit in a really you know, memory intensive application, whether it be rendering video or whether I'd be gaming, something of that nature, I'll do a quick Memory Clean after that just to uh, improve the speeds of my Mac um, while doing intensive workflows. Popcorn Time is the only illegal application that I have on my computer, um, and I can't say that I don't like it. I really do enjoy it, and you know I do like paying for my content, supporting content creators. However, Popcorn Time has just made it so efficient and wonderful to browse movies and great access, um, and it's never let me down in terms of streaming or buffering or anything of that nature. Porthole I use to port my audio from my MacBook Pro to my iMac speakers. Um, so for instance, if I have my MacBook Pro set up and I want to listen to something, I can quickly port the sound from my um, MacBook Pro to my speakers that are plugged into my iMac. RDO is my music streaming service of choice, and it's completely my music platform. I love it. 
um, use it on mobile as well, and their Macintosh application is pretty excellent. Um, you know, it's the same thing as their web browser application, but it allows you to control your music via the hotkeys that Apple has um, pre-programmed on the keyboard. ScreenFlow is the application that I'm actually using to record this video right now, and they have some great editing features as well as screen recording features, and they're just an overall really reliable and quick to use and easy interface for building pretty nice screen tutorial videos. Smart Converter I use to convert video files that I download that um, can't be played on the Mac or to convert something from a .move to an MP4 file. On Archiver, I use and it's absolutely excellent, which can open RAW files, or it can also open certain executables and take files that you need out of them. Um, so it's a really great and powerful application, especially if you're dealing with people on the Windows platform. Transmission I use to download torrents, um, and it's been absolutely excellent. It's a super easy interface, no nonsense, no bloating. It's a really great application, and I love it for that. Tweetbot, a little expensive on the $20 end, especially uh, you know just for Twitter. However, I'll show you where I use it, and I use it right over here, and I have all of my tweets happening, as you can see, right next to my browser. Um, this is just catching up right now that I usually don't stream that fast. Here, this is the normal stream. Um, and you know, for a pro user, it's absolutely excellent. I can stick it right to the side. I use it on both of my computers. Uh, the interface is super slick, uh, keeps up to speed with all my tweets, and since I have all my news stories over there, it kind of acts like an RSS feed. And then finally, Ulysses is what I use to write if I'm writing a really long um, maybe essay or research paper or, or if I'm writing a long article for online and I just don't need to be distracted with any other nonsense, I use Ulysses. And I missed one that I did also want to bring up and that is Sublime Text. And Sublime Text is one of my favorite lightweight text editors. If I don't feel like dealing with Dreamweaver or Xcode, Sublime Text is my go-to. Just want to make sure I didn't miss anything else. Pixelmator, I absolutely love Pixelmator. If I want to do a quick touch up on an image or quickly take something out on a PNG file, um, I can do that and not have to run Photoshop, which is a little bit more intensive and the interface is a little bit more uh, intense. And if I'm trying to do something really quick and easily, Pixelmator is definitely my go-to for that. Again, at $35, may, may or not be for you. And those are pretty much all of my go-to applications that I have running on my latest um, Apple computer here. Um, so if you have any recommendations for me, I'd really love to hear. If you have any questions about the applications that I have, I'd also love to answer those in the comments. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe for more tech videos. Thank you.